Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're going to be turning through to Luke chapter 18, but before I read our passage, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for your love for us, your kindness, your mercy, your grace, as we find it in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray, help us to see him and love him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke 18, picking up at verse 35. As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Well, as I said yesterday, we've been working our way through these different people entering the kingdom of God. So we've seen tax collectors, and we've seen widows, and we've seen disciples, we've seen little children. And then in yesterday's devotion, we talked about this sort of centerpiece of Jesus talking about his cross work and the fact that it's through the cross work of Christ that we receive all the benefits of the kingdom. And now Luke takes us onto a different path, into a different scene, but around the same sort of ideas. And so we're on the way to Jerusalem. We're walking towards Jerusalem with Jesus in order to do his cross work. And we are drawing near to Jericho with Jesus. Jericho is a pretty busy place. I know it's the place that had the walls destroyed at the time of Joshua, and it's the place that was rebuilt at the cost of two sons, as uh, Joshua had prophesied and cursed. And yet now it's a city, it's a town where, where business and life happens. And so Je- Jesus is, is drawing near to Jericho and And as he draws near, there's a crowd following him, which is normal, right? Everywhere Jesus goes, there's a crowd. And so it's busy, it's bustling, it's noisy. And so as as this crowd with Jesus begins to approach this blind beggar, we're told, hears the noise. He knows something's going on. Of course, he's blind, so he can't see, right? But he hears that something's happening. So he cries out, you know, what's going on? Someone tell me what's happening. He inquires what is meant by this noise, by this racket, by this crowd. This is abnormal. And he's told Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Now, that's not a whole lot of information, right? There were other people who had the name Jesus at this time. I mean, there could have been another Jesus from Nazareth for all we know. But all he hears is Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Now, that's important. He's passing by. He's not come to stay. He's going to, he's going to be here very briefly. And then he's going to be gone again. Which means what? This is a limited window of opportunity for this man. This man is blind. And he's a beggar. He has nothing going for him. He has no hope of improvement. There's no way he can get, he can get a job. And there's no such thing as an employment benefit. No. He's without hope, save in the sovereign mercy of God alone. And it's in that condition of absolute, abject poverty and brokenness that this man hears the news, Jesus is passing by. And what does he do? He cries out. Jesus, son of David. That's striking, isn't it? He doesn't say Jesus of Nazareth. He says Jesus, son of David. Jesus, 
the promised Messiah, he who would be born of David, have mercy upon me. Why mercy? Why didn't he say grace? Why didn't he say kindness? Why didn't he say pity? Why didn't he say compassion? He says mercy because he recognizes the only chance he has for help is mercy. Because he doesn't deserve anything. He's not worthy to be healed. He's got nothing to give, right? You can't say to Jesus, well, look, I'll give you my riches, like the rich young ruler. You can't say, well, I'll lay everything down. Like the disciples, he can't say, I'll give up my house. He's got nothing. He's not like the tax collector who's rich. He's got nothing. And so he cries out to Jesus for mercy. And the crowds tell him to be quiet. Isn't it an ugly picture? Those who were in front of him rebuked him. Telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Can you picture him? Sitting by the side of the road, blind with no guide. Pleading for mercy. And people saying, be quiet. Jesus is busy. It's like with the little children. Jesus doesn't have time for you. Be quiet. What does this man do? He cries out all the more for mercy. Maybe you know this feeling. Maybe you know what it means to be desperately in need of something from the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and you've cried out and you've cried out and you've persisted in your prayers over and over. And people have said, give up. And they've turned you away. They've tried to turn you away like the little children. But like a tax collector, you've, you've recognized that you're... You're not fitting to be justified, that you're a sinner. And like the widow, you've persisted and you just desperately want mercy. Can I just tell you something? Cry out all the more. Are you longing for mercy? Are you longing for help from Jesus Christ? Cry out all the more and do not give up until you obtain that which your soul longs for. What does this man receive? Well, Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. I'd love to see the look on the face of those who were trying to silence the man. When the news comes, I think in one of the other Gospels, if I remember it rightly, it says, they came to him and they said, Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Can you imagine his heart rejoicing as all those around him are, are rebuking him and chastising him and he's just crying out for mercy. And then that joyful noise, Jesus is calling you. He gets up and he comes and he falls down before Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, what do you want me to do? He says, Lord let me recover my sight. And Jesus says, recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. Why? Why faith? Why your faith has made you well? Well, it's all in that admission, isn't it? It's all bound up together. You're the son of David. All he heard was Jesus of Nazareth. Yet he had a heart to believe so much more. He cried out for mercy because he knew in his heart that this was the one, the only one, who could save him. And he said, Lord, let me recover my sight, because he believed Jesus could do so. His blindness could be solved by the mercy of Christ. And what's the outcome? Oh, isn't it a beautiful picture? Immediately, he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the naysayers all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. This is the picture of a blind sinner coming to Christ, isn't it? Yes, it's the picture of a blind Bartimaeus being healed. But it's also the picture of you and me, blind in our sin, crying out for mercy, 
and Jesus Christ saying, bring him to me. Bring him to me. Bring the blind sinner to me, and I will give him sight in my mercy. Do you know Jesus loves to give mercy? Do you know Jesus delights to give help? Will you come to him for mercy? And will you take him to others? Will you be the one who goes to others and says, Jesus is calling you? This is our saviour, who would lay down his life to save a blind beggar, and to save you and me. May we give all glory and praise to him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the mercy of Christ. Would you help us to lay hold of it, to receive it, and to be blessed in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.